Hello everyone, welcome to one of my most sought after and excited to be visiting attractions here in Las Vegas, the Pinball Hall of Fame. This is actually a new facility as the original location was located a little closer to downtown, but they have a much larger purpose-built facility here now, which is remarkable just even on the front. I wish I could see it at night. Who knows, I might come back just to see this sign again. I already walked inside. There's not really many tips that you require at the Pinball Hall of Fame, I'd say, other than if you're fastidious enough, bring a roll of quarters, which I have. So, as you're gonna see when we go inside, the first thing you encounter is the ATMs to dispense these uh, coins and all that kind of stuff, of which people line up for, but I'm presuming if you got one of these, you can walk right in. So let's go find out. Pinball Hall of Fame, Las Vegas. First ever visit, first drop. Just like that, the line is gone, but as you can see, here are the machines that I was referring to. It was definitely a crazy line. I'm immediately catapulted to my childhood. This is remarkable. Now it is all situated in a very large warehouse building of rows and rows of machines. Lighting is relatively dark in here right now. I don't know if that's on purpose because there is a little more lighting up at the top, but uh, we shall see. Well, we're gonna go row by row here. There is also a lot of uh, older machines here that are being rebuilt. I am going to give a channel shout out however. Definitely check out Yellow Productions vlog on this facility. Uh, he has a lot of extensive knowledge about these machines due to his family history. Um, so there's a lot of interesting stuff you find out about. I'm not so sure this photocopier is a machine. Spy Hunter is definitely an old school machine that I used to play. I'm actually in the spot that I was going to end uh, Dr. Mario. There's so many machines here that I used to play in my childhood. World Series, I remember this as well. I'm sure a lot of these will be up and running again once they have the time. Here's a very old Gottlieb & Co. pinball machine. I'm going to try to do a walk around of the entire facility, especially I'm mostly interested in these arcade games because they were definitely a big thing in my childhood. Like Enduro Racer, some of these things I have not played. I have not been on some of these games for the better part of 30 plus years. We're getting into some, uh, some titles that I'm not even familiar with. Out of order, check back tomorrow. It looks like some of these machines come and go over time. Dozer looks really cool. You kind of can't see what's going on in there. Late 77, so they even have like information on what's going on with the history of each machine. Street Fighter. Now this is uh, the film version from 1995 with the fabulous Raul Julia, the most, probably one of the best ever villains in a video game adaption. Probably the best. I remember at the time that he was announced as, um, oh, I can't remember his, I can't remember his name now, I'm so bad. It's been 15 years or 25 years, but uh, almost 30. But I remember at the time that he was announced as the villain and people were like, what? And now, you couldn't imagine him anyone else playing that role. Dig Doug, Galaga. I knew we were gonna see some famous ones. I'm actually gonna play this game right now. Cause uh, yeah, I wanna play Galaga. I know that there's also a Dragon's Lair here. So I've got 10 bucks and quarters. That should do some all right. Cause like at the end of the day, all these machines still cost the original price of 25 cents, which is a bit of a steal. I'm not sure if they hit you on the ATMs on the way in, but uh, I'll uh, update you on that later on. Cannot be an arcade without Tetris. Frogger. Now mainly, uh, the other vlog that I was talking about did not focus much on the arcade game, so I'm giving you an overview of every single one here that I can. 
especially because after this, I'm going to play them all, basically. Punch-Out is going to happen for sure. And Donkey Kong and Wackaroo and World Series. This is a really old, I think this is a Gottlieb machine. It looks like it's from the 60s. It's completely manual. It's kind of like a hybrid of a pinball machine and an arcade. More machines that aren't working, including Target Zero from Bally. I wish that this actually was working. It looks kind of cool. Okay, just finished a little session here in the arcade area. Uh, yeah, I highly recommend bringing quarters in advance because you just get going here. I'm going to tour the rest of the facility now and, uh, you know, give you an idea. It is an overwhelming amount of machines, I'm not going to lie. So, like, I don't think I'm really going to be able to really point out much other than some of the things from the past, like Hollywood Heat. You don't see that these days. There's a lot of classics, like, in that um, other blog that I mentioned, I definitely, again, recommend checking it out to get more about the history of these Gottlieb machines, which are the lighter colored ones. Space Jam. It just goes on, guys. It's gonna go on and on and on. As you can see, it goes on. This is half of the first row of machines, as there's another section in the back. Star Trek The Next Generation. Some of these games cost 50 cents, I will warn you in advance. Not everything is a quarter. Some of the older games, or pretty much every older game is gonna be worth a quarter. Could not be an arcade without a Zoltan. Should we find out what Zoltan has to say? It dates from 1969, as is clearly indicated. Let's see what Zoltan has to say. Well, a little bit of a giveaway of what I am. Oh, we gotta place our ear to the receiver. don't know what Zoltan had to say so when I watch this back we'll see whether or not his predictions ended up being true because I had to put the receiver up to the microphone to hear what he was saying there or at least for you guys too. This Lord of the Rings pin machine, pinball machine is definitely one of the newer versions of these games. You can see the insides and outs as well, the mechanics of what goes on. Lots of receivers, transistors, etc that go into creating these machines. They're really a technical marvel for their time, to be honest. So, Simpsons Pinball Party, Iron Maiden Legacy of the Beast. That is a game that I will be coming back to play. You can tell that this alley, which is like right at the center by the main entrance, is where all the more popular games, the modern incarnations are. 24, Tron, the new version of Tron that is. She got distracted by Zoltar there. As we got all of these really classic um, big interactive games. Hubert's Quest. I do remember this one from back in the day as well. I just don't look like they're having a great time on the Comet, to be honest, if you can see that. He's taking his drink on there. I love the artwork. This is a completely Gottlieb-specific 
area of the museum, as you can see all these machines here, you can kind of tell them apart as they have that sort of tan finish on the machines themselves. And there's no shortage of them here at the Pinball Hall of Fame, that's for sure. We are in the center portion of the first or second aisle, technically, I guess, of this museum. It's a bit overwhelming. You could spend an entire day here without question. You could spend numerous days here if you're actually very good at arcades. Like, just for some insight, I spent about 20 minutes on my first couple of arcade games there. So as per, like, casinos, and even when I was uh, playing around in arcades in my past, uh, yeah, the time flies in an arcade without question. Now, there's a big sort of section of arcade games over on the center side that I'm going to go check out. We're in the center of the facility right now. As you can see there's some games like Hummer, which is definitely a newer game. Daytona USA does come from my childhood, a Sega game. It's another classic. We have some of the uh, more well-known pinball machines here from Williams. I just want to see that that is actually Williams that constructs these machines. This is a Stern machine, actually. Stern pinball. You can tell because they're newer. And of course you have claws. Of Looks like some of those presents even date from the original machine, because uh, yeah, some of them look a little old. Strikes and spares. Big, Lebe Big Lebowski pinball game. I'm going to take a second, because there's no way that I'm not playing this, so I'll see you in a sec. like five dollars for the credits, single player, not too bad, five levels, and I have broken a sweat doing it too, I have to take off some layers to get this done, I probably should get out of here, I'm, as I said earlier, you're longer than I anticipated being here, but uh, that's what happens when you're here at the Pinball Hall of Fame. Okay, I am out of breath after that marathon session. I had to finish something, right, while I was here, and that was the game. It's 25 cents. I should say um, that some of these games, including like the Twilight Zone pinball machine that I played, was 75 cents. Uh, so not everything here is 25 cents. Definitely the older machines are. Um, but as you get to some of the more recent arcade games, uh, you're definitely going to get uh, some pricier options. I got to look at how much coin I have left because I literally have dollar left in quarters after that session on Turtles and all the other games that I've done. So I'm going to wander around here, get ourselves out of the Pinball Museum to do a couple of other things that I'm supposed to be doing today, but it was raining outside, so no better place to come when it's on a rainy day. So enjoy a little tour on the way out. I'm going to not say anything. I'll just let you enjoy the imagery, and then we'll head on out of here. be a place without Dance Dance Revolution. Well, it doesn't look like official merchandise, but we do have this Star Wars Tumblr thing. So, uh, I don't know. I'm not leaving Vegas without a souvenir, so why not a 50 cent one, right? We'll put the coins in the slot. You can see all the characters. There's some cool ones in there. I definitely want Jabba. Jabba would be sweet. Let's see what we get here. There is like pretty much every character that we got going here, so let's see what we get. Oh yeah, we got Jabba. You can't see him in there, but yeah! All right, Zoltan must have said it was my lucky day today.
Pinball Hall of Fame leaderboard. I don't know if I just got on there because of my Mutant Ninja Turtles escapades, but it seems like all these machines are hooked up to the system so that way you can actually compete. I'm sure that they have more than their fair share of competitive machines. I'm very glad that I found the Rush Pinball Machine. It's a dollar. I don't have enough left to actually play it. I gotta play one more. for it to be Gojira, but unfortunately he's also a dollar too. Yeah, this land speeder game, that is also a dollar. Probably should have played that too. There's just so much. I will be back. It doesn't really matter. The no shortage of rarities. Some working. Some not. Zoltar, he's more expensive. Maybe because his eyes move. is a wrap from the Pinball Museum. I actually played one of those classic um, Gottlieb games on the way out from 1966. Five balls for a quarter. Uh, I would recommend also, uh, it's getting crowded in there, so if you have the opportunity you're going to be at a machine for a while, definitely grab a chair so nobody kind of bounces in behind you. Um, and I just uh, sort of flashed some of the rules that you can see on the way in, because uh, you have to be respectful. This is a museum, and a lot of these machines are the only ones of their kind. So yeah, coming here after you've had a couple of drinks downtown or in the strip, and then you come here, not recommended. Start your day here, and then go on and move back to the libations and the sins that await you on the strip. All right, guys, that's a wrap up from the pinball museum i'm gonna have to say that was exactly what i was expecting it was incredible i spent what eight nine american dollars for a couple hours of entertainment i don't think you can find that anywhere else in vegas and if you're like me and you have nostalgia with these games well it's definitely worth checking out because it'll bring you right back to those days that you played them as a kid